In this video, I'm gonna show you three ways to create seamless Instagram carousels inside of Adobe Photoshop. I'm also gonna share some of the tools that I've created to make this whole process a way, bu a way bunch simpler, a way bunch simpler, and share with you some of the tools and the techniques that I've created for myself to make this whole process way simpler. But before we get started, to say thank you for clicking on this video, there's a free Photoshop template in the description which you can download that we'll be using in this video which will make the setup a little bit faster and a little bit simpler to save you some time. So go ahead, grab that, grab some of your favorite photos, and let's get started. To create these seamless carousels, I actually use the multiple artboard method. Now, if you're setting this up from scratch, what you wanna do is set the artboard to a width of 1080 and a height of 1350, because that's the maximum resolution that Instagram currently supports. And right off the bat, we're given one artboard. You can think of this as one of the panels inside of Instagram, but we need multiple panels. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna come over here and hold the Alt button and then drag down. Now that will create a duplicate, but they're right on top of each other. So I've actually got to come over here and just drag it to the side. Now I can do that as many times as I want for as many panels as I want. Now you can also just drag right inside of the window here. If I come to the artboard and just hold Alt and drag it over, drag it over and drag it over. Now we have four artboards, but we actually need one more that represents the overall artboard for this seamless post. So I'm actually gonna duplicate this one here. Another method, again, I can just right click, say duplicate. I'm actually gonna call this artboard zero and it's gonna be on top of everything, but I'm actually gonna click and I'm gonna drag it so that it is the full width of the document that we want to create. Now that's how to set up the template, but there's a few more things that I need to do. So I'm going to close this and open the template that you've hopefully just downloaded. And that's what this looks like. Now, one thing you'll notice is I've just put some text here to make the whole thing easier so you can identify where they are. I'm actually going to turn those off. What you're looking at here are all of the images that I've selected from Lightroom. These are full resolution, uncropped, because I'm going to do all that scaling and that cropping inside of Photoshop. Now I'm going to grab this image and I'm just gonna drag it into my Photoshop artboard. And you'll see it lands on artboard zero. And now what I can do really simply is just scale it to the size I want. And of course you could tile this across as many panels as you want. Now, one thing I like to do is make sure that there's something interesting in each of these panels. So I'm gonna go filter, blur, Gaussian blur, and apply, yeah, 50 pixels is about right. Maybe I'll drop it a little bit. And now I'm gonna drop more images on top of that. Maybe I wanna grab this image here and then grab this image because again, we want our first post to be intriguing. So if I take this and I scale it up and then grab one more of the front of the car. And then if you didn't quite like how it was sitting, you could grab something like the selection tool and then just go mask like that just to crop it in. I'll do the same thing with this photo, crop it in. And of course, with a bit of tweaking, with a little bit of scaling and a little bit of masking, you could continue to create this seamless Instagram carousel. If you wanted to be a bit more subtle with your transitions, there's a technique that I like to call color blocking and blurring. In order to achieve this effect, you'll need some photos that have either really solid, strong colors or some elements that are out of focus. So in this case, I had this really awesome through the window shot that has the headlight here, which is out of focus. And then I'm gonna grab this second photo of the steering steering wheel, and then this third photo of Alex looking into the mirror. Now what I can do is if I grab that middle image and I'm just gonna apply a blank mask to it, I'm gonna go down here, click the mask, and then if I grab my paintbrush and just have it set to black, make sure my mask is selected, and then you can just change the size of your brush, and then you come in here and start to brush around the edges of that photo. And of course, this is a bit of trial and error, but what you can see is now that the red from the door is starting to blend in with the red from the mirror. Now that's not a perfect transition. So what you could do is because we have some black there is I'm gonna create a new layer. And again, I'm gonna make sure my brush is set to black or if you wanted to sample the color in your image, just 
hold the alt and use the eyedropper. And then you can just start to paint on to hide those seams and really ease that transition. Maybe drop the opacity on the paintbrush, just start to brush that in. And if I fast forward to the end result, this is what you get. So you have the three photos and then you have that layer in between that kind of is that dark mask blending layer. Here's another example I did recently, and the reason this one works so well is because both images have very similar colors and very similar levels of focus. So if I hide the mask, just turn it off, you can see that on the, the right side of this image, there's black and green and it's kind of blurry. And if we go to the other image, well, it's black and green and kind of blurry. So when I overlay them and then I turn that mask on, you can see that it's kind of feathering between the two. And if you wanna adjust that, again, you just grab the mask, grab a paintbrush, and then you can paint on and off. Of course, you wanna make sure you're not seeing that seam. So you sometimes have to come back in and brush it back on. And then you just work on it until you kind of get that seamless transition between the two. Before we jump to the final edit, I wanna show you this nine panel carousel that I created because it uses a whole bunch of techniques, but also if you want to grab the full set of templates that I've created, this is gonna be available on my website all the way from two panels to the full 10 maximum number of carousel panels you can have for Instagram. If you find yourself creating a lot of carousels, honestly, these templates are a great way to save time. I have them set up in a folder and anytime I need to create them, they're just good to go. Of course, you can create them for yourself or if you wanna pick them up from my website, you can do that as well. But here's what I did for this panel. So it's, it's kind of retelling the story of this event. Again, the first image is always gonna be one that grabs the viewer and makes them want to scroll next. And I've been a little bit tricky with this because you can see for the second panel, I've actually overlaid the first image so it kind of crosses that boundary. And then for the second image where they're in the hanger, I have two versions of the hanger. I have the in focus one and then an out of focus one, which kind of acts as that background, as that transition element. So then you can see as I go onto panel four, five, and six, now they've left the helicopter, they've landed. We can see some close-up detail. So I'm thinking whenever I'm laying out my photos, not only do I wanna show these epic wide shots, but I also wanna kind of get, you know, some close-up details of them manipulating the GPS or whatever it is for your photo shoot. And then we get to this one of actually flying inside of the helicopter. And you can see I've got a background version of the cockpit that's blurred out, but I've also used the edge of the window to kind of frame between the two photos. And so all I did was come in here with the brush and I can brush more of it in or go to the black brush and brush more of it out. Basically, you go through this whole Instagram carousel and then you end up at this final one where it's, you know, they've landed and now the helicopter's taking back off. So really thinking, you know, how am I telling a story? How am I creating intrigue so that people continue to scroll through this full Instagram carousel? But back to this Subaru shoot. Here's the final set of images. I wanna make this a little bit more seamless. So we're gonna come in here and use some of those techniques that we just discussed. Already, I've got the wide shot that landscape shot set up in the center. And I've set it up in a way so that there's still something interesting in each of the frames. So I'm actually gonna come to this first photo. And one of the things you'll notice is that there's a bit of sand reflecting in the window of the car. So I'm gonna grab this door shot. I'm gonna apply a mask. I'm gonna go into my black paintbrush and just drop the opacity. And I'm just gonna do this just to give it some subtle hints of seamlessness. And of course, you, you know, you could keep taking that more up the car, even come into here where the, the sky behind the headrest is visible. So maybe I want the sky from this image to start to bleed into that image. You know, maybe I want to do the same here. It's these really subtle hints of seamless transitions that aren't necessarily like perfect, but are the things that you can look for when you're trying to blend your photos together. In some cases, the photos might be hard to transition together, but in this case with a little bit of red, it's just kind of like hinting that there's another photo. Like you don't have to make the transition super explicit. I'm actually gonna do what I like to call color blending. So I'm gonna create a brand new layer on top. I'm gonna set the blending mode to color. And what this will do is now any color, let's just call this color, any color that I add to that layer will color all of the colors underneath it. So if I was to go into the paintbrush, pick a color, and then come in here with my brush, and you can see as I start to paint with it, it starts to color 
the photo underneath. You could even come over here and do a little bit of that here. You can also do some of the techniques that I was showing earlier, do stuff like creating a vignette around the edges of your photos, or you could even do the opposite and create a light or a white layer to make it look like there's a little bit of a sun flare or a, like a blooming effect around the edges, really just to transition all your photos together. With all those techniques, here's what I end up with. So I've got you know, a layer that's adding some red around the edges. I have some of those shadow layers. I have some of those highlight layers. And I've even done one more thing with this drone photo, which is pretty cool, and gone ahead and add some clouds. You can get these overlay textures on the internet, which are basically just these black and white images. And if you set the blending mode to screen, it will remove the black and allow all the white clouds to pop through. Now that you're all done, we need to export this. And it's a little bit tricky but what you want to do is grab all of your layers, right click on them, say duplicate. This will create a duplicate of those layers. Then you want to right click on all of them again and say merge layers. Now you have one layer that is all of your photos combined together. And we're actually gonna drag that down to IG panel one, which is your first artboard. And we can turn off the artboard zero and see that we have just the first panel. And now we need to copy it to the other panel. So you can duplicate it. And the easiest way to do that is just to click, hold alt on your keyboard and drag down except it's not where you need it to be. So we're actually gonna drag it over. And if you notice, there's these pink auto guides that show up. And so I'm just gonna continue to drag it. It's kind of like locking it in place. And once I reach the end there, it'll say 1080 pixels so that I know I've moved it the right amount. Now we gotta rinse and repeat. So we gotta grab it again. We're gonna hold alt, drag it down to the third panel and then we're gonna move it over one more time. And then when you have all of your artboards and all of them lined up in place, you go file, export, artboards to files. This dialog box pops up and it should pick the same folder where your Photoshop file is saved and you hit run. Now, if you wanna speed up this whole process of duplicating the layers and copying them and moving them to all of the artboards, if you pick up the full template package from my website, it actually includes actions that automate this whole process. And instead of having to duplicate the layers and then move them to all the artboards, you literally just select the size that you want, hit the play button, and it literally in two seconds, it just did it, it brought us to the export dialog box and you hit run. And then Photoshop does all the work in the background. It will take all those individual files and throw them into the folder where your Photoshop file is saved. Future Anthony here, because there's one more thing I need to show you to make sure that this Instagram post looks good. First, you wanna make sure you select post and then select your first image. In this case, there's my first image and now I need to hit this icon in the bottom left to make it go full screen. Then I'm gonna hit the multiple photos icon and select all of my photos in the correct order so that they show up and it's perfectly seamless. And as you swipe next, you can see that all the photos are in the correct order. Now you're ready to post. Now, if you wanna see a live example of how these Instagram carousels look and how well the seamless transitions actually work, there's a link to my Instagram below where you can check out those examples for yourself. Otherwise, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. That was good. Was that good? That was kind of fun. Did I miss anything? <laughs>